Uh, hello and welcome to this project. So before we start coding, let's take a look at the projects that we are going to make. So once the user is in the home page, so he can view all the products with the details, the price and the image. He can also add products to the cart. And also he can update the quantity, he can increase the quantity of each product. And we have here the cards, we can view the cards. Here we have all the products, so we can increment the quantity or decrement the quantity. And once the quantity is below or is equal to zero, the products will be removed from the cart. We can also, as I said, decrement the quantity and we can also remove the product. So let's add another one. So we can add this product. Go back again to the cart. So here we have the pay now button. So once I click on the pay now button, I am redirected to the Stripe checkout form. So here I can provide my email and also the test card and name and I can pay the order. So here we have the, the view shop orders and amount to pay. And once paid, I am redirected to success page with payments done successfully. So this is the project that we are going to make. So first, create your own fresh Laravel application. I have already done this and I have here a folder for the back end and later we will add folder for the front end. So let's add first thing that we need is uh, the model so the first model that we need uh, is the products or the product model so let's run the command and create the model so we need first to move to the backend folder and run the command pitch partisan make model let's name it products and we need also the migration so now the model has been created. We need also we need also factory. So let's add factory factory and we name it product factory and we need also cedar. So let's name it product cedar and here cedar and also we need the controller so let's close this tab also we need the controller and its products or let's add it inside epi folder and we name it product controller product controller so now it's done let's now start adding the migration so the migration we have first one which is for the products so where is it so products so this one so here we have the products so let's add so we have the first field which is the product name product name and let's remove these two ones and copy and paste only this one so we need another one for description products desk and another one for the price and another one for the image And I think that's all. So now we have the, the migration. Let's run the 
the migration so let's increase the database so php artisan migrates and i think i have already uh, a database called backend so let's move to the in file and change the name of the database so here inside the inverse so here i have already and another database that has the same name so let's change this one to view laravel shopping cart and save let's now run the migrations so let's go back php artisan migrate so we don't have a database let's create it and everything is done successfully now let's move to the factory let's go to the database and here we have the factory let's bring some fields from here so let's bring copy this one and paste it here so now we need to add the product name the product uh, description and the product uh, price and the product uh, and the product image and we will use fake to uh, to generate fake data so let's do that now so the first field that we have is the product name and we can add fake uh, Take name or anything and here we can also add product desk description and we can use a paragraph paragraph and here we can change it to word because the name will give us mr and name or mrs and name so we don't need the, the products names to be like human names so let's use only word and we need also the price so the price and the price will be a number so let's generate a number so not here but here so let's generate a number between so where is it so i copied this one and I want it here. So we want a number. Number between, let's choose a number between 1 and 1000. What else we need? We need the product image. So let's remove these two lines and only copy and paste this one. And here, rename it to product image. And we want a random image let's use the image url and here we give it the dimensions or the width and the height of the image so let's add just random numbers you can use any numbers you want so we have the product name the desk the price and image so let's now move to cedars so here we have the product cedar let's use it and call the factory that we have defined and we will uh, so let's create uh, so let's create uh, i think let's create 20 project uh, 20 products not projects products so let's call products factory and give it 20 number and here we want to create 20 products and let's go back to database cedar so here so here let's command these lines and here we will call the so we will call cedar that we have already defined which is the product cedar so here product not products but product cedar column column class so now we have 
product sitter and don't forget to import it here so not here but we uh, so we don't need to import it it's imported using the class without importing it here. and here we don't use the models so let's see the, the database php artisan db seed and as you can see the database has been seeded now let's move so we need the, the controller so it is the controller we have already created a controller yes it's here so we need the so this controller will have only one function this function will return all the products that we have uh, you can return all the products uh, using the response json or if you want to use a resource you can do that let's use a resource which appears make a resource and we call it product resource so if you want to customize laser fields you can do that and here we will add as i said only one function this one will return the products resource that we have created and we use the collection method and we give it the product don't forget to import the model and latest first and we get everything so now we have defined the as i said the first and only function that we have inside this uh, the first and only function that we have inside the, the controller which is the products resource or the index function that uses the products resource that we have already added so now let's move uh, so we need to add the routes so let's move to the routes and the routes will be inside the api routes but in laravel 11 we don't have the api routes so we need to install them so let's do that now php artisan install api and hit enter and let's wait until it's done and we will back again so once done you will get this message telling you uh, if you want to run all the pan pending database migration so let's uh, type yes and now everything is done successfully now if you move to the routes folder you will find here the epi routes file let's command this route because we will not use it and add our first route which is uh, the not the index but the products route and we will use uh, the products controller with the, the index function and we don't need to add name so this is the only route that we have for the products so now we need to add uh, another controller which is order controller so inside this controller we will handle the payment so let's you can name it order or you can name it uh, payment controller you can name it anything you want so let's create this controller make controller also inside api folder and let's name it payment controller and once done let's move to the files so let's go to the payments controller so here we will have the first function which is uh, the pay by stripe so we will name it pay by pay by stripe and this function will have the request 
and inside the first thing we need to do is to set the API key the API key we will get it from stripe later but now let's just add code so let's add try so let's add try and catch so try and catch and inside here so the first thing we will do or let's let's first so we did not install or add package that we will need which is the stripe package so let's do that now and later we will add the function so we can add it using composer so let's do that composer require so the package name is stripe slash stripe dash php so stripe slash stripe dash php let's hit enter and wait until it's done and we will continue so now it's done as you can see so let's go back to the controller so as i said the first thing that we need to do is to provide stripe api key so don't forget to import stripe and let's use the method set api key and we will use a environment variable that we will add later which is stripe stripe key so now you have the key so as i said here we have try and catch so the first thing we need to add session so let's add the variable we name it checkout so let's name it checkout session and let's create session so all this code is already in the in the docs so we need to use the stripe checkout session so let's import it so don't forget to import it from here and we can call the method creates and inside the, we define the items so he, here we have the line items uh, which is uh, uh, an array containing another array and inside this one we have the price data and the price data is also uh, is also an array that contains the currency and the currency here is usd which is dollar and we need a product data and the data here we will get it uh, not uh, the products data but the data or the products we will get them from uh, the front end uh, which will be inside the cart but here we will only provide name for the products data which is the name that we have seen when we did the payment so we we have seen a view shop orders you can put any name you want and what else we have we have the unit amount uh, which is uh, the price and the price we will use function that will calculate the amount or the price or the amount to pay not the price the total amount to pay so the function name will be calculate calculate order total so we will add it later and this uh, function will take all the items that we will get from the front end which are the items that have been already added to the cart so we will have a variable which is cart items that will contain all the products or all the orders of the user so let's remove this uh, semicolon so as i said we have the line items we have the price data and the price data has a currency and currency here is usd we have a product 
data and inside pro products data we have the name here we give it the view shop orders you can name it anything you want we have also unit amounts which is the total amount you pay so you will add as i said this function that will calculate uh, the total and also we need to provide the quantity so let's move down here and provide quantity and here we can only add one so the quantity will not be displayed we only provide a dummy data here and here but the total amount is the the dynamic variable that we will that we will calculate and use and next what we need we need after so here after the line items we need to add a comma and we need to add also a mode and the mode here will be payments and uh, what else we need we need success url so the success url will be the page that the user wants the payment is done successfully so it's the page that the user will be redirected to and we will send it also from the front end and we will get it using the request so it will be a variable which has the name success url and finally what we will do we will return a response and the response will be a json response that contains the url the url will be the link that the user will be redirected to or the stripe checkout form link so and we can get this uh, link using the checkout session that we have created and call in the url from checkout session this one that we have created here so let's add some space between the these ones and i think here i have a mistake so it's an array that contains the url with the checkout url so now we need also here a semicolon and we will add the function as i said later and here if we have any error we will use or we will throw an error and we will use the error exception error exception so we, you can use it here use error exception and as i said we will throw an error and we can return this error using the response so response json and here we have the array that will contain the error and the error we can get it using the e get message get message and that's all for this function which is uh, as i said the, the way by stripe as, but as i said we need the, the api key so we need to add this variable inside the inv file so here so let's add it down and this variable or this uh, environment variable will contain the key and the key you can get it from your uh, dashboard so i assume that you have already a stripe account a test account you can move to developers and uh, check here api keys and you will find here the secret key click here to show it and please use your own case because i will roll this key once the once i or once the project is done so please use your own key and once you click here it will be uh, copied and you can paste it here now we have the secret key so the sk key not the publishable key not this one so we need this one second one you can put it here now we can use it here 
So let's add this function. As we have said, this function will calculate uh, the total of uh, the orders. And as I said, this uh, function will take the items. So let's add here a variable which is the items. And we need to add here another one, another variable which is the total, and the total will be zero. And we need to for uh, to loop using for each through all the items. So let's loop through each item, and here we have the item, item which is the product or the order that we got from uh, the front end. And once we have the item, so we need to add the total, and we will increment the total using another function that we will create, which is calculate, and let's name it just calculate total. So here it's calculate order total, and here it's only calculate total, and this function will take the item, item. Uh, price which is the product price and also the and also the item quantity one and uh, what we will do and that's all so it takes as I said the product price and uh, the quantity and what we will do, as I said, we will return the total. And the total we need to be multiplied by 100 because if we uh, send, uh, for example, $100 to uh, Stripe, it will be divided by 100 and we will see only $1 inside our uh, inside the payments here if we move to the payments we will see only one dollar if we provide 100 dollars so that's why we need to multiply the total by 100 if we provide 100 it will be multiplied by 100 and it will be one thousand dollar and stripe will divide it by 100 and it will be 100 so here you will find it 100 inside the payment uh, dashboard so i have a slow network that's why it's not showing so as i said we only multiply this by 100 to avoid the or to uh, override the, the stripe calculation so let's move to the next one this one will be simple function which is the calculate total it will only as i said takes the price and price and quantity and it will return you can calculate it here if you don't want to use this function so here we will have a total and we can use the price that we will get multiplied by the quantity. And as I said, you can do this here. If you don't want to use this function, you can multiply the product price by the item quantity. And here we return the total. And that's all for these two functions. So I still have nothing here because the network is a little bit slow because I am away from the from the Wi-Fi coverage because uh, I'm filming away from the from the office. That's why I receive slow network connection because I am a little bit away from the office. So here, as you can see, this is the payment I done it today, or we have done it when we, we did demo, which is $381. So let's go back here. Now we need to add the routes for this, uh, for this uh, controller. So let's do that now. So let's move to the API file and here let's add the two routes. So the first one will be 
post request and it's uh, so let's add pay slash uh, let's name it pay order and it will take us to the payment payment controller controller so that's not it's payment controller and don't forget to import it and we will use the so what's the name of the function so let's go back here so it's what is the name so it's pay by stripe so let's go back here and use it here so it's by pay by, by stripe and we have only one function so here so we will only use this function but the other ones are used by the same function so we have only one route which is the pay order and we call as i said the controller and function now we have done with the, the backend so everything is done inside the back the back end we need now to move to the front end so please try to create your own uh, view just uh, fresh or new application using vit or anything you want and see you in the front end just a moment and we will move to the front end so now as you can see i have created my own view js application so let's move to the front end so here we have some files that we don't need for example this one so we don't need assets also here we don't need the hello component or we can change it later let's skip it and inside style let's remove styles we can if we want we will use our own styles so let's first create all the package or install all the package that we will need so in pm install so we need the stripe uh js package we can get it from stripe dash js also we need the view stripe and we can get it from the view stripe package also we need the axios and also we need the bootstrap bootstrap and also we need the bootstrap icons bootstrap icons and we need also penia to create its store and also view router and finally view tostification tosti and here we need to call the latest version so don't forget to add latest here because if you use only view notification we will get an error so add here latest and hit enter and wait until it's done and we will move to or we can uh, keep it here without waiting until it's done can keep it here and move to the and move to the files so we need to uh, first thing we need to import or we need to wait so let's wait until it's done because we will import bootstrap and uh, so i think that i have something wrong here so what is wrong so here uh, view from the roads projects view tostification so i i think the problem is inside the view tostification as i said before we can remove it and later we will add it so for now just remove it from here so we add view router hit enter and later we will add the view tostification to avoid the the problem that I have that I said 
So now everything is done successfully. Let's clean the terminal and here it's next, not latest. So I made a mistake. Sorry for this mistake. So let's install it again. npm install. So as I said, so let's bring it from here. So it's view justification and next not latest so i made a mistake sorry for this mistake and as i said now we need to move to the main.js file and we need to import first we need to import uh, bootstrap files so let's import bootstrap uh, boot uh, stra strap and bootstrap is inside dist and css and bootstrap.min.css so if you are wondering from where i get this file so it's inside node modules if you move down you will find bootstrap and dist and css and here the file that we are looking for and same thing for the icons Let's, let's import bootstrap icons. It's inside font uh, bootstrap. Uh, so it's font bootstrap uh, icons dot CSS. And also here we need the JS file for bootstrap. So let's copy and paste. So it's inside this uh, JS and bootstrap dot mean dot JS. Now we have all these files and same thing for the, the view toastification. We need to import the CSS file. So let's bring it and put it also here. We don't need the semicolon. And uh, what else we have? Uh, we need uh, to now to create the routes. But before we create the routes, we need to use the toast. So to use toast, we need to import this one. The toast. So let's import it and put it here. And later we will see how we can use it. So let's go back. So here it's done. So let's create now the route. So inside src, let's create the router folder. And inside we have the index.js. And let's also create some, uh, let's create some components because we will need them. So let's add here, uh, let's add the first one, which is the home.view. Let's add the view templates remove this one and here add setup also let's uh, let's remove this one we don't need it which is the hello let's add also a products folder and here we will have the product list dot view and what else we have so we need another one for the product item so let's rename it product list item so it's product list item dot view product list item and let's copy this one and paste it here so it's product list item so now we have these two components we need another folder here inside components let's call it layouts layouts and inside this folder which is layout so you will have the header so let's add the header so inside here we will have navbar so let's add here the templates remove this one so here it's set up and style let's here add div let's give it header and also here inside the home let's add div and give it a home so just for now later we will add the content so now let's 
keep this one organized and also this one so now we have uh, these files uh, so let's add as i said let's create the routes uh, so inside folder router and file index.js so let's start creating our routes so const router and we will use the create route create router and create router will take an object which is the history and the history we will use the create web hash history history and we need to define the routes and the routes are an array which will take objects and the first one is the path it will take us to the home page and let's give it name and name will be home and also we need components and components will be the home components so we will import it later and later we will add other pages but for now let's only keep the home so let's import the create router create router and what else create web hash history and we need to guess them from the view router so it's inside the view router but as we need we need to import the home component so let's import it now import home components from so it's inside components uh, and name is home dot view so here dot view so let's now save and what we need to do now is to export the router so let's export default the router and now we can use it inside our uh, home or inside our main.js file so let's go back here so here we need to import the router let's import so we can import it from the file that we have already defined which is for the folder which is the router and you don't need to provide the name of the file because it's already indexed and it will be imported automatically so now we have here we define the the uh, the app so we need to use so here before we mount so before we mount the app so let's move this one to down so we need to use as i said the router so now we can use the routes and mount the app so let's uh, so uh, where is the so before we start our server so here inside the app we did not change the contents of this file yet so we need to add the router so let's so i think let's move all of this and add another one and change this one to setup and here we don't have styles uh, so let's add the uh, div uh, with a class uh, container so let's add container and inside uh, we need to import the header and what else uh, we need the, the router view so let's add the router view so to display all the content here and we need to import the header so let's do that now import the header from uh, so it's inside components layouts header dot view so now we have changed the content of uh, the file so let's run the server and see what we will get in pm div it's enter 
now the server has started let's move to to the link and check what we have here so as you can see we have the header and the home so now we need to add the header and to do that so we will move to the to the bootstrap website and bring the navbar so let's do that now so if you move to the bootstrap website so here look for the navbar and let's bring this one so let's copy it and move to the header where is the header so here and inside here let's put the content so here we have so let's organize first code and later add the content so here we have the button so let's change this one first routes let's change it uh, to nothing just add the icon bi bi cart and uh, what is let's give it a class which is each one to be a big icon and it will take us to the home page let's save and see what we have here so as you can see it's here so let's see what else we have here so we have the so let's organize this part and we don't need form let's remove it let's open add also so we need also to change it so i forgot to change it to the router link and same thing here we need to change it to the router link and what else it will take us as i say to the home page and this is the home and i think uh, we need only one and we need another one for the cart so i forgot we need another one for the carts but before we do that let's add the nikon and it's bi bi house uh, door door fill and here it's home and also as i said we need another one for the cart so let's remove this one which is the drop down so we don't need it so here let's add uh, so let's add uh, let's add the icon which is the bi bi i think we there is another one or we can use only the cards check so that's because here we are using the card so i want to change the tip of the icon let's use a uh, card check and here we will have uh, so we will have the number of items that we have inside the cards for now just put zero later we will change it once we reach cards so let's change it to router link and it will take us to cart so let's save and see what we have here and as you can see the links are here only we need to change this one from uh, me auto to mx auto now it's better let's move to the index file so here let's change the body the background of the body to be G lights and let's change also the title to view and Laravel shopping cart save and see what we have here as you can see now the title changed and it's better now we need to display all the we need to display to so get and display all the all the products so let's do that now let's first move to the home component so here where we will get all the all the products so here first thing we need to do is to define a variable that will take all uh, the products so let's do that now so let's let's uh, name it data and we will use reactive 
want zwar get to import it from uh, view and the reactive will take an object that takes the product and it will be an empty array next we need to get the product or to add function so let's add it cause fetch all products and it will be in a sync function so let's use uh, the try and catch and we can use or define another variable which is the response and use axios so first it's await and axios gets and we will use uh, the the routes that we have defined so you can uh, define a uh, base url if you don't want to repeat the same url again and again so i am doing it like this because uh, we are using only i think only two routes so, so if you have a big uh, app you need to define a base url so not use the same link each time you want to call the api so because here we are using only two routes so i will do it like this for uh simply or for uh, making things uh, easy and simple so now we have the product so let's uh, so let's go back to the just to be sure that the route is so it's product so that's it so let's go back to the home so now we have the response all we need to do is to set the data dot products to the response dot data dot data because we are sending product resource so the data so the products will be inside the data so now we have the products and if we have here uh, an error we will console and log the error so just save for now and let's call the function so we will call it on mounted once the component is mounted we will call the function which is the fetch all products so this one so let's call it now and save and i think we did uh, so don't forget to import on mount and also we need to import axios we did not do that so let's import axios from uh, axios and we don't need semicolon here so let's save and check what we have uh, so let's see if uh, we will get products or not so let's move and inspect file let's check the network so we don't have anything for now let's so let's go back and let's refresh again let's see now so let's keep only the fetch calls so as you can see here we have the products and we have something wrong what is the problem so i think i made a mistake inside uh, this route so i think there is it's the same route so let's go back here and uh, where is the so this one or i did not uh, i did not start start the server yet so that's why it's not working so let's start the backend server so let's go to the backend i thought i i have already done this but it's not done so let's run the php artisan server and copy so as you can see we are using the same as it's defined here so let's refresh the page again and see what we will get uh, so as you can see here we have the call and we have the 200 response if we click and check the response so we have the products so we have the data and here we have all the products which are 20 products so let's now display these products and to display these products we will use 
the uh, product list components that we have already defined so let's remove this part and use the product list so not this one but we need the product so let's use it like this and the product list needs uh, to take the products and the products are the variables that or the products that are inside data dot products that we have already defined and we need also to import the product list let's import it product list uh, product list from uh, so it's inside component slash product slash product list now we have send products to this component so let's use it now so we need first thing we need to do here is to product is to import the product list item and let's import it from here and it's inside same folder so we don't need to go back to the components and inside the product list we will display the product details so let's before we display the product details let's first loop through the or let's first get the products because we are sending products here as props so let's first get it so const so const props let's define the props and uh, prop is the product so products will be so let's organize the code here and here so the products will be uh, an object that has the type so the type here is an array so we will get an array and it's required so we need it needs to be required uh, and what else we have the required is true now we have the product item let's loop through the products and display each product so we need div with row and the margin top and the bottom of four and what else as i said we need to use this so let's copy this one and paste it here and we need to use this product list item and they used the for to loop through each product inside the products that we got and used k and k is products.id and what else we need we need to send the product which is the product now we have done with product lists and here we have the as i said product list item and inside we will display the product details so let's do that now so let's add for now just a div with a call md4 and margin bottom 2 and let's uh, let's for now add just products and check if we will get 20 products or not so if so what is the problem here we cannot resolve uh, product list item so it's here so let's uh, just check for it so it's inside so it's inside the same folder so now as you can see we have 20 products all we need to do now is to display the products details so let's do that now so let's add the content of the product list item so we have only the products here so we need div with class hard and each or the height to be 100 so next we need to add the image so the image will have the class which is card dash image dash top uh, and here inside so we will give it the product 
and we did not add uh, or define uh, the props so let's do that so we need to add the props and we define the props and inside the we will get the product and product will be an object and it's required and that's all what else we need so for now we need only the product later we will add other things so the image we can get it using the product image or the products image and what else we need uh, so let's give it here just uh, product image so if we save now and we take a look so as you can see we have uh, 20 images so let's move to the next fields so let's add the body so here we have the card so we need the card body and inside the card body we have the title so let's add a card title and inside the title we need to display product dot product name change this one to name let's save and see and as you can see we have the title let's add another one which is product description so let's change the class to the product text and here desk save let's take a look and as you can see we have description let's move to the next one which is price so let's use the p tag and the p tag will take uh so here let's change it to p tag i think it's better to be a paragraph than div and here a p tag and the p tag will have span so let's add span inside span with font weight bold and text danger so let's add here the price so it's price let's save and take a look and as you can see we have here the prices all we need to do is to add the dollar sign and as you can see now we have the prices so next we need to add the button so we can add this product or uh, add a given product to the cart so let's do that so we need a button and the button uh, will take the class beta n and beta n primary and we need an icon and icon will be bi bi cards check and in uh, beside icon we put add to cart so let's save and take a look and as you can see we have add to cart but icon is not displaying because here it's bi dash cart check so now as you can see we have the icon so now we need to add the, the cart functionality so to do that so we will use uh, so we will use penya so penya we will use it to store the or to create the store and add uh, the actions and actions will be the actions uh, will be the add to cart action uh, remove from cart and uh, uh, increase and decrease the quantity and to do that we need to use penya so let's do that we have already installed penya in the when we created the project the front end all we need to do that to do now is to set up or set the uh, store so let's do that first inside the main.js file so the first thing we need to do is to create the penya so here we will create a variable let's name it penya 
and we will use create penya so create penya to use to uh, so we will create use create penya method and we will use the penya that we or the variable that we have defined here so we need to import also create penya from penya let's do that import so create penya from penya let's change this one to from and now we have as i said we have defined the variable here all we need to do is to use it so to use it we need to use penya so not it's not uh, uppercase but it's only penya and we need and we need also to use the toast that we have imported here so we as if we did we do that we will use the toast notification inside all our projects so so to use the toast notification inside all the projects so we need to import the toss and use it here so now we have penia we have router we have the toss so i think we are done with the main.js file all we need to do now is to create the star so we need to add another folder so let's add it inside src so let's name it store and inside this folder let's create another file let's name it use cart store and you can name it anything you want uh, here we have the file the first thing we need to do is to export const and let's give it name the name is the same which is use cart store and we need to use define penia define it's not define penia but define store from penia define store and we will import it later so it's define store like this and we will import it later from penia let's close this tab and here inside before we move to the object so we need to give it name so let's give it a cart as name and second param is the objects and inside objects we will have state and state is uh, another or it returns an object so let's return the objects and inside objects we will have the cart items which are the items or the products that has been added by the user now we have the state next we need the, the getters so the getters so we will have two actions the first one we will name it count cart items so here we count how many items we have inside the cart and we will return uh, we will return uh, so here inside the so inside the getters i think we use uh, so i think we use state or we use this just let me go back to the docs just to be sure so as you can see inside the docs so here we define the name of the of the store we give it a name as you can see here we have the states we have the getters as we have done and we can access them using the state and inside action we access them using this so just i want to be sure that it's uh, state so we returned state dot cart items dot land and also we need another one which is for which is for uh, how many items are we return only the cart items so let's name it get cart items so here count cart items here get cart items so we only return uh, states dot cart items and finally we have here the actions uh, and actions we have the first one which is add to cart and this one will take the item which is the products 
and the first thing we need to do is to check if this uh, product is already inside our cart so let's get so we need to get the index of this product so we use as i said here we use say to get the cart items inside the getters so let's uh, so this one needs to me to be moved down so it's not inside the getters but in outside the getters we add actions so as i said here we access the state using the state but here we access the state using this so we can use cart items and we find the index of the product so here we have the product so we loop through the cart item we get the product and we check if the product dot id is equal to the item dot id which means if this product that we want to add to the cart exists already exists in the cart or not so if it exists so we need to check if the index is uh, different from minus one which means that this product exists then we need to increment the quantity so we'll use the this cart items and we give it index if the product and we want to increment the quantity and here we increment the quantity by one this one is if as i said if the product exists and if you want to display a toast message telling the user that uh, the quantity has been incremented you can do that if you don't want you can you cannot so let's first def uh, import define store from penia and also we need uh, to import use toast use toast from uh, view toastification and here we need to define toast and we will use the use toast so now we have the use toast let's uh, toast i will toast a message to the user so success message telling him that that's the let's telling him that product quantity quantity uh, product quantity increased so this one if the if the product is not inside the cart so if the product so this one is if the product is inside the cart or, or is already inside the cart so now if the product is not in the cart so what we will do we will only add quantity because the item or the products when we store it inside the the cards we will not add the, the quantity so we need to add it now here so we give it one and we need to add it inside cards items so we use the push method and we give it the item and we display the message telling the user so let's take this one and put it here and let's also give it uh, so let's give it a timeout or the message timeout let's give it two seconds and same thing let's take this one and put it here and here let's tell him that the product added to the cart so that's all for this uh, function which is add to cart next we need uh, to increment the quantity of the products inside the cart let's name it increment q and increment quantity will take the item the first thing we need to get the item or to check if the item exists if you want to check for it if you don't want to check you can do it uh, you can do it uh, directly without checking if the item exists or not just to be sure if uh, 
the products that the user wants to increment exist. So here we check if the products exist. If yes, then we increment the quantity and we tell the user that's incremented. If not, if the product doesn't exist for some reason, we can tell the user that product uh, uh, not found. So in case for some reason the products doesn't exist, so we provide this message. If you don't, you can keep it. If you don't want, you can remove it. Next one, we need to decrement the quantity and decrement the quantity will be the same as this one. Just we will change decrement quantity only. We will change the so we only we will change the incrementation from uh, the we will not increment but we will decrement so here we use uh, the minus one and also we need the, so here we tell the user that products decreased not increased uh, so we need to add another test to check if the products or the quantity of the products reaches zero we need to remove this product. So let's do that. So if this dot cart item dot index, so the products that we are looking for, and we find quantity, if the quantity is equal to zero, so we need to remove this product from our cart. So to do that, let's check the or guest cart items and use the cart items and we filter the product and we find the product we find the products by id and if we find it then we will return only or if we we look for it and if we find it we will only return the products thus the id is different from the one that uh, reaches does the quantity reaches zero so we filter the products and we return only products does their id is different from this products that we are that has reached zero so let's move to the next so the next one will be remove from cart and it's the same as we have so let's uh, Let's add function or the action. So let's add it here and let's change it to remove from cart and it will take the item and same thing as we have done here. All we need to do is to uh, remove the product from the cards and tell the user that it has been removed. So let's bring the message and tell the user product removed, removed from the cards. So, so what left, so all we need to do now is to, to call these actions that we have defined inside our store and uh, we will call the add uh, to cards function from this one but before do, we do that let's display how many cards inside item how many card uh, how many products inside the cart so inside the header or the navbar so here so the first thing that we need to do is to move to the header and we need also to import the use card store that we have defined so let's import it import uh, use card store and we get it from the so we need to go back store and use card store dot js now we have the use card store we can define a variable here that will take the use card store and now we can have access to the uh, actions that we have defined here 
or the getters knows the actions so we, we have uh, access to actions and the getters so you can use this one which is the count card items uh, to display how many items are inside our card so let's do that now so we can use store dot get card items and uh, you didn't you don't need to add parentheses inside the uh, when you use the getters here the actions or the getters you don't need to add parentheses you can access the getter without parentheses so let's take a look so it's zero so now let's uh, call the add let's call the add to cart action so we will do the same thing as we have done here so here inside the list or the product list item so we need just to check if the path is the same so if we go down and go down so i think it's the same so dot js so here we will use the store so once we click on this button so let's move the button down so add click once we click here we will use the store dot uh so what is the name of the action each add to cars this one so we bring it and put it here and we give it the products that we want to add so this one so now let's try to add this one so if we hit here as you can see products added to the cars but it did not change here we will see why and if we add another one products added to the cars if we add the same products the products quantity increased the same thing here the products quantity increased so as you can see but it's not appearing here why let's check the console if we have any error so the state is not defined inside count card items so the state is not defined where is it so here the state is not defined so let's go back to the so we need to provide state inside the action so let's do that we need to use it here and to use it here so let's check and see so now it's zero so let's check so the path not found for cards we will check for that later let's add now so as you can see now we have one if we add another one now it's two if we increase quantity it doesn't change here if we add something so it's three so don't forget to add here the states and you can use this, uh, you can access the cart item without using the getters if you want you can do it like this let's go back to the header and you can use if you don't want to use the actions you can use this one so let's use directly the cart items dot land if we do this and we change so nothing happen it's three if you refresh it will be zero so as you can see now it's zero if we add something it's two so the same thing if you want to use but for better practicing it's better to use the uh getters for best practice but if you prefer to use the property or the cart items uh, property directly from the header you can do that you have access to it using store so now we can add the items to the cart so we need to display the items that we have inside the cart so let's do that now let's remove uh, this one and this one and what is this so we need also to use to add the route so let's add first the folder here so let's name it cart and let's add component cart dot view and let's add the setup here and also here add cart so let's remove this one and add div and inside it let's put the cards for now just to test and here we need to add the routes so let's add 
it will take us to cart let's rename it to cart and we need cart we need cart uh, component let's bring it from the folder so it's inside cart and here it's cart slash cart dot view let's save and take a look so now we have the cart so let's uh, let's display all the items that we have inside the cart so let's move to the cart component and uh, the first thing that we need to do so the first thing that we need to do is to import the cart items from the store so let's first define or import the cart store and define the variable we have already done this before now we have the cart store and uh, the use cart store and defined variable so we need to add content so let's here add div with a class row and the margin top and the bottom of four and add another div with call md12 uh, and another div with a card with a class card and div with a card body and uh, inside we will have a table with class table so next we need to add the t head and inside we have the tr and let's add th and we will have uh, so let's add five for now so we will have the id so we have next image and what else we have the quantity and what else we have the price and what else we have sub total or the total just or sub total we will calculate the total later and let's add another one this one will have the action to remove a product from the uh, card so let's add the body and here we have tr and let's look now through each item of the card so we have the v4 item in store dot cart or get so as i said you can access cart items or use the getter so get cart items and let's give it k and k will be just item dot id so what else we need we need to display now the td and here we have the item dot id you can display the id or if you don't want you can display just index you can get index and display it because it's now it's just simple up that's why we are using the id but if you are uh, working on a big project so don't use the id use the index so next we need the image so let's bring it from the product so we have already here the product list item so let's bring the image so from here and put it here so the second is the image so you can get it the same thing using the item dot product image so let's go down so here the class let's change it to let's use fluid and rounded and let's give it width of 60 and height of 60 and what else so the alt uh, let's use only the product image so what else we need we need the product name product name and also product uh, price uh, not product price but item dot quantity so we need quantity yes uh, the quantity and then the price okay so let's add here the quantity and then 
the price. So the quantity and the price. So price. So let's save and see what we have here. So now we don't have anything. Let's go back. Add this one, this one, this one. Let's move. And as you can see, we have uh, products here with the quantity, the price. So we have something wrong. So the product name. So I did not add name. So let's add name here. So let's save and check. Now we have named quantity and price. So the price is product price. So let's go down here and add product price. So let's save and take a look. Now we have the price. Let's add here a dollar sign. And we need subtotal. For the subtotal, we can use the price multiplied by the quantity let's move down here and price multiplied by the quantity so let's bring this one and use it here save take a look and as you can see now we have uh, uh, the we have the subtotal all we need to do now is to increment or decrement the quantity so let's do that so here inside the td here after or uh, before and after the quantity we need to add an icon which is bi bi with caret up and uh, we don't need anything else let's add another one one for the caret up and one for the caret down so this one will increment and the uh, this one will decrement so let's save and see what we have here so as you can see we have increment and decrement and once we click on this uh, icon so we will call store dot increment increment q and we give it the product which is the item and here we will use uh, the decrement so let's copy and paste it and call decrement so let's save and take a look uh, now if we click here as you can see the products quantity increased if we click here it's increased if we click here it's this decreased if we click here the products decreased and removed so we can increment or decrement. So now we need to add a button here so we can remove uh, the product from the. So we can remove the products from the cards. Let's do that now before we calculate uh, before we calculate the amount or the total of the amount. So let's here add. Uh, another icon so let's bring this one and put it here and the icon will be so let's uh, let's use the cards there is an icon card x and we can call uh, the action so let's go back to the use card store so the action is uh, this one remove from card so let's bring it and put it here remove from card and it takes the item so let's save and take a look and as you can see it's here so if i click on it to have the products removed from the card successfully so now that the product has been removed so we need to uh, to calculate the total so let's calculate the total so we need to add another so let's move down so uh, here we need to add another tr and this one will have th and th will be total and we need to give it uh, a call span let's give it three and class text center text to the center let's save and take a look and as you, as you can see we have the total we need another one this one is td 
TD and here we will display the total and to display the total we need to uh, loop through we need to loop through each uh, item inside the cart and uh, and um, increment the total so let's add here a variable let's call it total and we will use the computed property that will take function and this function will return so let's let's add this here and as i said it will take store uh, cards items and we need to use the reduce method and reduce method take accumulator and item and we need to use so not here but here and we need to use accumulator and we will increment the accumulator using the item dot product products price multiplied by the item dot quantity and here we provide the initial value so not here but here which is zero so the initial value of the accumulator will be zero so we use the product price multiplied by the product quantity here we have the total now we can use this total so here to display the total so let's use a dollar and here it's total so let's save and see let's go back so the total for now is zero so i think um, so we can uh, we can here add a span and this span let's give it a badge and bg danger and rounded peel and save let's take a look and as you can see it's better if we move to the home page and we add other products let's move to the cart as you can see here here is the total if we decrease the total also is decreasing if we remove this product as you can see it's the same and if we increment so as you can see it's the same now the total is uh, calculated correctly we can add the style for the for the icon just to have a cursor pointer so let's add here pointer and let's save and take a look as you can see now we have the cursor as pointer same thing here if we want to remove the product so let's now what left is the payment so let's add some products and move now to the payments and the payments we need to add uh, another or we need to add uh, another component that will do that so as we have seen when let's go back to payments so where is the payment so let's close so we will back again to this one let's close this one the card store we don't need it so we will add here a route so let's move to the payment controller so as you can see here when we move to this or when when we click or execute this function so you will get the link or the checkout link so as you can see here we return the link or the url that will take the user to the checkout form so we need to to get this url and once the user clicks on pay now so we will where he will be redirected to the stripe checkout form so let's first create the uh, components that will uh, get the checkout or stripe checkout link so let's add here inside components let's add another folder let's call it payments 
and inside this folder let's add another component which is stripe and inside the let's add structure and here called setup and uh, inside this component we will have a div with class row and call md or just let's add row for now and let's add another div with call md6 six. 6 with the margin type uh, margin left and right auto and let's give it a margin top of 5 also and here inside the div we will have a button and the button will be better and better and primary primary and uh, it will be uh, so inside we will add here pay now and uh, we will add later the function that we, it will execute so for now just add type type just give it button so let's close this tab now we have this uh, this component we can use it but we can use it only if the total is greater than one so if the total is greater than one then we will display the button so let's add here div and check for the total if it is greater than not one but greater than zero so we need to check if the total is great than zero so then we will display the component so let's add here stripe and we need to import it so we can let's move it down i think it's better to move it down check so the div uh, this one so this is the card body so let's move down so we need it to be inside card body so let's put it here and uh, here if the total is greater than zero let's import the component which is the stripe component and we can get it from uh, payment slash stripe dot view let's save and see what we have here so as you can see we have pay now but i think uh, the button needs uh, so let's give it so it's uh, it's the same bit and primary but here we have i think um, mx auto margin top so let's give it uh, if we give it if we give it 10 let's check if it will be so it's i think we need to give only let's give only four so it's pay now but um, let's uh, so let's give it only three and check if it will be so it's I think let's give it 12 and uh, just add here margin but I think we need the margin to be inside here inside the row so let's check now so I think now it's better so the pay now is better than uh, the, uh, the previous one so the style is better now we can pay but if we let's close or remove all the products now the button disappears so if we go back again so now we have the button we can make it dark if you want so i think it's dark is better so let's check and see so now it's better so now we can click on pay now and once we click on pay now so we will be redirected as i said to this url that we will get from uh, the controller so let's do that now so the first thing we need to do to import axios from axios and also we need to so let's go to the cart so here we need the, we need the, this one can bring it and put it here and also we need the, another one which is this one so we can use 
the star so let's define it here and next we need as i said to add function so let's bring this one and put it here and let's rename it to fetch payment url fetch payment url and it's in the sync uh and wait and we have already defined the route which is this one which is pay order so let's copy and paste it here and what else we have we need as i say to to send the cart items because here we received cart items and we calculate the total of uh, the cart items so let's so it's not first it's not a get request but it's post request and here we need to define the variables that the variables that we will send so we need store store so we need the cart items first let's define it first cart items and only with one m and now we can use store and get cart items and also as i said we need success url because here we receive also the success url this one so we need to send it so after the payment is done successfully so the user will be redirected to this url and we can uh, use we will add it later but only just we will just send it and we will add later the components so it will take us to payments slash success so payment slash success so we will add this route later now we have defined success url and uh, the cart items that we will send and once uh, we get the url so the user will be redirected to this url so we will use location window dot location dot h r e f and we redirect the user to the response dot data dot url which is this url as i said this one that we get here so now we have done with this and we have if we have any error then we will display it now we can use this function here so once we so add click once we click on the once we click on the button so we will get or we will fetch the payment url so let's check and see if we have anything uh, wrong or everything is working if we pay now and let's look at the network tab here as you can see here order is pending and as you can see now the response is 200 and here is the link so the checkout link and let's check if we will be redirected or not so i think i am not redirected something is wrong so here cannot set property of undefined setting each r e f so let's go back here so it's window dot location not uh, i have a typo here so let's check again and now click on pay now let's move to the network so it's i think it's not done yet it's pending and as you can see now it's 200 let's go back here and as you can see i am redirected to the checkout or the stripe checkout form as i said i have a slow network because the wi-fi is way a little bit from where i am recording that's why i have slow network now as you can see we have seven four four dollars let's add uh, an email and here uh, test card provided by uh, stripe and provide dates secret code and name let's pay now so as you can see the payment is done successfully and i am redirected to the payment success all we need to do now is to add this component that we did not add yet so let's add it now so let's uh, copy this one here and add the routes here 
let's name its payment success and let's here call payment and let's add as i said we need to add this component payment success and let's copy and where is the payment so here payment dot view and call the view uh, structure and here it's setup save and here it will take us to the payment success it's inside the same folder not the same but inside the payments and the name is payment success so let's save and now let's add the contents of this file so it will be just uh, a div with row margin top and the bottom of five and uh, what else we have uh, call md6 and mx auto and also div with the card and div with card body and a padding let's give it a padding of five and finally we have only a message to the center telling the user does the payment done success fully thank you so let's check and see what we have here so as you can see payments done successfully and thank you so let's try final one to check if we have any errors so here inside the console we don't have anything so we have the products let's add this one add this one add this one let's increment the quantity check here we don't have anything wrong let's move to the cart increment decrement decrement remove it increment decrement and decrement and remove let's move to the pay now if we hit pay now and let's wait until we get the response from the network tab from here so let's where is it so it's not showing here so now i think it's done so i have here a lot of calls so let's go as you can see now i am redirected to checkout so now uh, if we provide the credentials uh, so as you can see i have here the amount uh, let's uh, let's call or let's add the email also the test and also the also the what else we have here also the date and name and let's hit pay now wait and now the payments done successfully and i am redirected to the payments done successfully component so i hope that you did enjoy this project if so so please like and subscribe and see you in my next projects.